So let's uh, let's draw this conversation out of the schools and into what manifests in the real world. We, we mentioned this early on, this uh, uh, Gwen Berry, Olympic athlete, goes viral because she's third place hammer thrower for the U.S. Olympic trials to join the team. She gets approved. And when the anthem plays, she looks all angry at the camera and, you know, doesn't salute or doesn't put her hand on her heart. And then she puts a shirt on her head saying activist athlete. Just a few years prior, she was holding up the American flag with a smile on her face. We can see how this starts to manifest in the real world. We have a couple of these stories. First, squad member blasts July 4th celebrations. Black people still aren't free. This generated some controversy. Uh, Cori Bush, a Democrat, dismissed Independence Day Sunday as a holiday meant for white people before claiming the land is stolen land and black people still aren't free. We also have Maxine Waters, who is not a, a, a new member of Congress, been for a long time, drags the Declaration of Independence on July 4th. Maxine Waters... Would she have? I, maybe she would have, but I kind of feel like she wouldn't have gone this far to criticize Independence Day were it not for the, the, the change in culture and the feeling that this is what you need to say to be accepted, to be approved of. Zuby, the rapper, has a thread and in it, he's like, here's some things I've learned over the past you know year or so. One of them is that people would rather be socially accepted than be right. People right. Would, would rather sacrifice their principles if it means they will be socially accepted. Things like that. Yeah, he's correct. Well, it's tribal, right? And so it's that concept that I had to struggle with within the Muslim community. When you dare to challenge the orthodoxy, you get thrown out of the tribe. And we ended up, for example, in our community fighting for women's rights. My mom didn't get invitations anymore to the potluck dinners. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't want to go to their potluck dinners. And so that's the sacrifice that you have to make. For her. When, yeah. This is very she much. She was inspiring <clears throat> to me. Yeah. This, is, this is very much a cultural revolution. Yeah. And so the, uh, this next story I want to highlight, just a few of these. National Geographic tweets that July 4th fireworks are racist. Smoke targets communities of color. Then we have this story, NPR de uh, decries Declaration of Independence as document with flaws and deeply ingrained hypocrisies. What are they working for the crown now? They, they want us to return to the British Empire. One of the arguments made by many on the left is that if we never had independence, then the Slavery Abolishment Act of Parliament in 1833 would have affected the American colonies and ended slavery some 30 years sooner. Maybe, right. or I argue that if the, if the southern colonies, or the, the southern states were still colonies of Great Britain, they would have actually pushed back and it would have caused the same level of conflict and strife and potentially even resulted in a war for independence. Yep. Or at the very least, it could have put pressure on the crown to wait because they were like, well, we have these colonies that produce for us. What people need to understand is that it may actually have been the American Revolution which helped the UK end slavery in that if the crown was still taxing southern states and the states relied on slaves to produce, the crown may have been like, well, you, you know, we're making a lot of money over here. We can't just do it. Right. But who knows? We don't know for sure. But what I can say is when they come out with these nonsensical statements like fireworks are racist, right. what they're, what's yeah. happening is they introduce Juneteenth, then they disparage July 4th. I think Charlie Kirk mentioned it was with Evanston, Illinois, yeah. that got rid of their July 4th celebration, mm -hmm. but had a Pride and Juneteenth celebration. Yeah, and so it's, the, it's this indoctrination of ideas spilling now into popular culture, right? Like, what is it that you can wear? What is it that you can't wear? How is it that you signal, you know, your amazing political correctness? And so this is the politics spilling into everyday life. And um, I walked by the... Uh, grocery store, the cereal aisle, and had the you know new cereal that's got all the multiple. Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, that's pro so weird. The Pride cereal. Yeah, what? the Pride cereal. I mean, so it's commercialization that's now chasing this new ideology, and um, and we have to just use our critical thinking. Yeah. Yeah, Kellogg's has a, a LGBTQ Pride Together cereal. Right. I'm not sure what it is. Is it just Fruit Loops? I don't know. Isn't it seem like it? I know. I that's it's exactly just, what it looks just like. Fruit Loops? That's kind of insulting. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just Fruit Loops. It looks like it, yeah. But it's got all the characters together. And it's really fascinating when you see all these uh, corporations changing their logos. There's a really funny meme <laughs> where it's a bunch of uh, evil corporations from video games and movies. Uh, with the rainbow logos, like Umbrella Corp. Yeah. <laughs> they make the zombies. Right. And they, the, the umbrella's got a rainbow on right. it. And there's <laughs> Aperture uh, Laboratories, which is the, the experimenting on humans, and it's a rainbow. Yeah. yeah, we get it. The massive multinational corporations are on our side, apparently. Yeah, I mean, this is the term that they call woke capital, right? The uh, whole idea of the 
industry, corporate America. That's what I spent 15 years reporting at the Wall Street Journal. I loved covering marketing because marketing was basically propaganda. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. yeah. And propaganda is all this. I mean, you make it fancy, you make it colorful, you make it read, you know, you, you confuse people, you end up and you end up selling your idea. We want to be optimistic that these conversations and the parents standing up will succeed. But I worry that it's, it's the average person doesn't care at all. Now, the point Bannon was making was that these moms are the average person who are yeah. standing up being like, what is this? So yeah. perhaps I think the important thing is not necessarily to be optimistic or pessimistic, maybe just to be vigilant right? Um, right. And, and, and pay attention yes. and stay focused and don't back down. Yeah. There's um, my favorite idea. Our president, Nikki Neely, said it on an interview a while ago that the price of freedom is vigilance. Eternal vigilance. Yeah. Yes. And I'll tell you, it really hit home this um, this Fourth of July weekend. I went to visit my parents in Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh. Went, w took my Uno cards because <gasps> I was going to play Uno with my dad. Well, in the PTSA at the school from where my son just graduated, Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, we had four parents seized the ma majority of the PTSA seats, and those four parents are against critical race theory. They're for merit. And guess what? The president-elect is the first black president-elect chosen for the PTSA, and he's wow. against critical race theory oh dear. because he wants merit. He doesn't want this like bigotry of low expectations. Who, who wants their kids to be told they can never succeed? Yeah. So <coughs> this weekend, the minority party, so to speak, the people who want to push critical race theory and uh, race-based admissions, they staged a coup. And they tried to basically unseat these parents who are trying to change the policy so that we can fight critical race theory in the school. I, I, and guess what? We won. Mm -hmm. We won. We defeated a coup. And I do, I, I do want to yeah. add a little bit of a good news into the mix because we can talk all negative and get all down and people yeah. are like, oh man, but we got the story from Fox. Walmart shoppers break out into Star Spangled Banner over 4th of July weekend in viral video. Yeah. The video is actually quite incredible. It's just people shopping right. when all of a sudden everyone's standing around in the aisles and they're singing the national anthem. Yeah. And that's in our hearts. You know, that is so in our hearts. And we were as parents this weekend. I didn't get to play my Uno. Harry didn't get to grill on time with his family. He was trying. But we were doing this because we love this country. And Yu Yan, she stood in Tiananmen Square to fight the oppression there. And this weekend, what did she do? She created beautiful graphics with flags of America it's talking about defending democracy. You know, that's that's the fight. That's the vigilance. That's the vigilance that we're talking about. And. And if every parent does it in whatever corner of school system that they're in, wh wherever you are in corporate America, wherever you are in, uh, in your neighborhood, you know, uh, HOA that wants to now rule what sign you can put and you can't put the blue line, you know, flag up and all of this stuff, like you have to be vigilant and protect rights. I, I watched a, a little historical video about the Star Spangled Banner and what the song actually means. And I think a lot of people probably don't know this because I certainly didn't. That what does it mean with the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night the flag was still there. It was that as the bombs were exploding, the flashes of light, you could see then it. see the flag just very briefly. Yeah. And every time they would shell this, this, this town or this, this, this city or the fort, they would, they, they would still see the flag standing. It couldn't be knocked down. And in actu uh, actually, as the story goes, it could be legend, but... They say the shells were actually killing people and the flag was knocked down several times. Finally, after the battle was over, when they went back to the fort and saw the flag still standing, it was being held up by the corpses of the men oh. who refused to back down. Right. That every time the flag would go down, they would lift it back up as they were getting shelled and then die on mm. the flag. Wow. That's what it meant. Yeah. It meant that there was an oppressive authority that did not, not respect the will of the people. And the people of this country said, we, we will not abide by this. We will fight right. for our freedoms. And now you have people who are using these morsels of truth, manipulations, lies, and constant negativity to try and take those freedoms away. Yeah. Arguing what? That uh, uh, it's bad yeah. that we had independence because the crown abolished slavery first. It's like, okay, be like the UK, I guess, with no guaranteed rights. Yeah. 
you know, they want to get rid of all these mascots and these names of people that they decide are on the incorrect side of history. But ultimately, we needed all of those folks to get to where we're at today. And maybe the journey wasn't perfect. Of course, it wasn't perfect. And there were injustices against all people. But you don't, the fundamental reason why I oppose critical race theory is because it rightly says that there was a hierarchy of human value, but it incorrectly now wants to bring a new hierarchy of human value to people. And that's just fundamentally immoral, unethical, and unacceptable. And that's what we have to fight. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat And we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.